Time now for an in-depth look at the market news this afternoon. And for that, I'm joined on the line by Dr. Young Jun Sok, Professor of Economics at the Catholic University of Korea. Professor Young, good afternoon. Thanks for coming on today. Happy to be here. Well, stocks in New York uh, ended last Friday with a nice bounce back after a week of declines. All three of the main indices closing higher for the day, but still lower for the week. What's the story in the global markets and your outlook for the days ahead? Okay, well, the U.S. market did have the worst week since February. Uh, they had a major drop on Monday through Wednesday last week. Dow Jones fell by about 1,200 points. S&P fell by about 4%. NASDAQ fell by about 5% in those three days. Uh, but it did make a comeback toward the end of the week. So overall for the week, uh, Dow and Jones and S&P dropped about 1%, and NASDAQ dropped about minus 2.3%. And the reason for this drop was basically uh, the uh, April's inflation figures caught everybody by surprise. Uh, Dow, uh, Dow Jones surveyed economists, expected about 3.6 percent, but what we actually got was 4.2 percent. Now, even though the figures were much larger than expected, if you go beyond the uh, surface numbers, it's uh, surprising that the stock market uh, reacted so uh, so much. Uh, if you look at uh, the components of the price index, uh, the, uh, while every part of the index did rise, the parts that had the highest rise were energy, uh, and this was over the 12-month period from uh, last April to this April. Uh, but uh, if you just look at the April figures, the energy price rise actually fell. Uh, so they were reacting to past price increases. And the uh, item that rose the most uh, in April, just uh, April monthly figures, were used cars. It rose by more than 10 percent, uh, but that's because of the bottleneck in uh, new car production that we're seeing because of the uh, problems with the semiconductors. So uh, it's a bit surprising that the uh, stock market acted so uh, sensitively to the uh, inflation figures. I think it shows generally that people do feel that the markets are overpriced. And uh, when the uh, Fed reduces the uh, interest rate or start tapering, uh, we can expect to see large drop in stock prices. Uh, European markets, it fell on Tuesday, but it rose uh, for the rest of the week. Uh, again, uh, that was uh, the fall was because of the inflation news from the United States. Asian uh, markets uh, showed different trends, uh, but generally uh, the uh, international analysts do feel that the Asian markets are volatile or they're headed downwards uh, because partially because of the uh, U.S. inflation figures again, uh, but also because the uh, coronavirus vaccination in Asia is running behind uh, U.S. and Europe. Uh, so uh, it presents somewhat of a pessimism on how quickly the Asian economy will recover. Well, today in Korea, stocks a uh, little lower on selling by foreigners and institutions. Retail investors, though, seeing another chance to buy. Tell us about the local market. Okay, well, uh, for the Korean market, it wasn't a very good week. It was down all last week except on Friday and uh, today. Uh, uh, today, uh, the uh, Kospi uh, lost about 0.6%. It ended at 3,134.52. Kostak, uh, it ended today uh, down about 0.4%, uh, 962.50. Individuals bought for both indices, foreigners sold for both indices, and institutions, well, they sold Kospi and bought Kostak. Again, uh, it seems to reflect a generally weak perception of the Asian markets. Uh, with the U.S. inflation, uh, there's increasing inflation fears in Korea as well. And uh, coronavirus, uh, the uh, lagging uh, vaccination rates uh, seem to be worrying not only the uh, other Asian markets, but Korean markets in particular. Well, now, with uh, concerns about rising rates uh, in the U.S. to deal with the inflation you mentioned, there are concerns about what that would do to Korean households and their growing debts. We also need to look ahead at what the Biden administration might do in terms of trade and climate change. What do you see ahead in those terms and what might need to be done about it? Okay, well, because of the increasing concerns about U.S. inflation, there has been increasing 
uh, concerns about Korean inflation. And because of that, there's increasing concerns that uh, Korean interest rate may increase. Now, this uh, concern was uh, also uh, in the news last week because Bank of Korea released a new report based on net household debt. And their calculations show that 1% rise in interest rate will mean 12 trillion won additional interest rate burden for uh, the Korean households. Now, uh, if we look at U.S. inflation figures and Korean inflation figures, Korean inflation fears are not as high as the United States. If we just look at the April figures, uh, U.S. rose by 0.6%. Korea only rose by 0.2%. Uh, so Korea is running, at least in April, much lower. Uh, inflation figures, if you look at Korea month-to-month -month figures for the last 12 months, the highest increases in inflation actually began in August, September of last year, and January and February of this year. April, uh, March and April, it wasn't that high. So Korean inflation fears are not as serious as the United States. But even if Korea does raise interest rates, they will not raise uh, the entire 1% at once, they will probably raise the interest rate in 0.25% increments. That's about uh, 3 trillion won debt burden. And that's only about 0.15% of Korean GDP for 2020. And also, most of the debt uh, is concentrated on the richest portion of Koreans. 44% of household debt is uh, owned by the uh, richest 20% of Korean population. Another 25% is owned by the next uh, richest 20% of Korean population. So 65% uh, more than 65% of Korean debt is owned by uh, people who have enough resources to handle the increased interest burden. So while it is worrying, uh, it should not be a very serious worry. Now, as for the Biden administration, uh, their trade policy seems to be to uh, continue uh, what President Trump has started with Chinese tariffs, steel tariffs even on friendly uh, trade partners and quota on Korean steel. Uh, Biden administration is insisting on more investment into the United States, not only to provide more American jobs, but, uh, but also to provide secure supply chain for what they feel are crucial products. Uh, they are starting an um, Buy American uh, Act, so uh, their government procurement will be more concentrated on products produced in America. And they seem to be foregoing reforms to the WTO, so problems we have in the WTO will be continued. Now, uh, one of the reasons why we're seeing this is that President Biden really cannot afford to go more free trade uh, because the uh, Democratic Party in the United States has such a narrow lead over the Republicans that I think if President Biden does introduce more free trade policies, he may lose a block of voters, which means that during the midterm elections for the United States next year, as well as the present presidential elections that they will have three years from now, uh, the Republicans may be able to come back into power and the democrats don't uh, obviously don't want that so we may be seeing this type of restricted trade policies uh, at least until the next presidential elections in the u.s well before we go professor it's the start of a new week we'll have data out on korean households how they fared financially in the first quarter so we should be able to see what to what degree the income gap is improving or otherwise uh, what's on your radar in the days ahead Okay, well, uh, for Korean economy, the uh, real interesting uh, one is a real estate housing market review done by the uh, government. And during this review, they will be reviewing the tax policies for property taxes, uh, real estate, and housing. And there has been a lot of arguments, uh, even within the uh, ruling party, on whether they should uh, lower the property taxes or maintain it as is. And right now, the uh, argument is so tight that uh, don't, I don't really I don't really know which way it will go. So this will be really interesting to see. Uh, in terms of foreign numbers, uh, well, not really that many interesting numbers coming out this week. But the uh, FOMC meeting, the Fed uh, Monetary Policy minutes uh, for the last meeting, will be coming out on Wednesday, and we'll be able to see how the uh, Fed members 
uh, FOMC members interpret the latest figures for U.S. and global economy and whether we'll see inflation and whether we see a recovery in the near future. Indeed. All right, Professor, we'll have to leave it there for today. Thanks so much for sharing your insights with us as always. Appreciate it. Thank you.